So anyways, I won't belabor the point any longer. The challenge is I'm gonna have you all create uh, the best performing version of Conway's game of life you can using Unity's data oriented technology stack and their entity component system. So Conway's game of life, I did a video making this with dots kind of a couple years ago now. Um, and I do think that this is going to be like a really good starting point if you haven't built anything with Unity's dots or ECS before because Conway's Game of Life just has like some simple rules. If you're not familiar with Conway's Game of Life, it's played out on an infinitely sized grid. And uh, basically each cell of this grid kind of references its neighboring cells to determine, you know, whether it should be alive or dead in the next generation. And each generation is basically just, you know, one single update of the entire, um, you know, grid of cells and everything like that. And so there's just some simple rules. Um, I'll have the, all those rules listed out on the jam page, but basically, um, you know, cells will kind of reference neighboring cells. And then, you know, from that, some really interesting behavior happens from that. Um, so let me just uh, point out a couple things. I just want to let you know that, um, you know, the point of this challenge is, again, just to do some interesting things with Unity's dots and ECS. Um, this is an unranked jam. So it's just kind of more like, you know, free flowing and allow you to kind of um, you know, experiment with different ways that you can use dots and ECS to complete this challenge. Because again, you know, even if you are an advanced user, I think even with this kind of simple challenge, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, the one thing that I would just say is um, I, you must use Unity dots and ECS as part of the, as, as the core part of your application. So basically, you know, don't just like, you know, write a shader that does the whole simulation that's not really kind of the point of the challenge again the point of the challenge is just to do some fun stuff with dots and ecs and kind of explore things in that nature um, but feel free to make the game your own if you want to you know take it a couple steps further and add in some you know additional rules to the game of life or some more interesting dimensions to make yours a little bit different feel free to do so um, and then, yeah, for the submissions, all that you need to provide is just a final executable of the simulation, a Git repository with all the source code access publicly available so everyone can reference that and learn from it. Because again, that's kind of the purpose of this is we want to you know, source a bunch of interesting ideas from the community and be able to share and learn from that. And then finally, just include a development write-up. This can be something you know as short as a couple paragraphs or as long as a couple pages if you want to just kind of talk about um, kind of your performance optimization strategy, maybe some of the things that you tried that worked versus some of the things that didn't work so well, um, maybe some of the things that you tried to implement but couldn't for some reason, and then also just in, um, you know provide some performance metrics, just like some general performance metrics about you know this is how many cells that you could simulate at. Uh, 60 and 30 frames per second and just note um, you know the different hardwares that you're using so yeah anyways the uh, conway's game of life you have uh, until the 18th at essentially 11 59 p.m pacific time so that's monday evening uh, not this coming monday but the following monday so you have you know two weekends as well as in a whole a whole week in between um, i think this is something that is a fairly low commitment challenge uh, something that you should be able to complete in your free time. So yeah, that is uh, the, the dots community challenge. Exciting stuff. I also see someone is asking a question, which is from Wayne games. ECS, is it mandatory or is job burst enough? Yeah. So again, I think that's where um, things get a little bit interesting. I, I, I do kind of would prefer that you use ECS as the core part of your application. Um, but if you just want to, you know, if, if you just want to try something with just jobs and burst and maybe see if that is, you know, much more performant than using entities um, and you do that in an interesting way, I think that's totally valid as well. I mean, it's all what, what people make it because uh, the first challenge here is just about learning, like trying something that, you know, pushes your own boundaries. Oh, wouldn't it be fun if I made Sean Connery's Game of Life in 3D or uh, wouldn't it be fun if exactly, uh, I yeah. merged it with... Uh, wave function collapse or some other thing or maybe you wanted to try um, doing the wildest burst thing and have like a bazillion uh, yeah entities drawing maybe you wanted to try graphics to draw instance uh, something which that is still considered dots because you're in the end still using native arrays and you can use burst with that and jobs and so on so it's all about like how much dots can you use and how interesting can you make it out of that 
if that's all yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, again, and make it your own, have fun with it. Again, this is just kind of all about exploring and, and trying different fun things with the community. Um, and I do see that, uh, you know, if we're benchmarking performance, it would be interesting to have a comparison to have one game done without ECS to see how they compare. Um, yeah, but again, I think the, the difficult thing about, you know, something like this is, there's a bunch of different ways that you could, of course, implement this with ECS, but there's also a bunch of different ways that you could uh, implement this with just straight up game objects. So, um, you know, if you want to do, you know, have that as part of your submission where you say like, you know, I want to do kind of like a game object version and a basic ECS version and do those kind of performance comparisons where, you know, you have a little bit more control over both repositories. So it's a little bit more of a one-to-one -one comparison. Um, I think that could be an interesting way to take that as well. Um, it looks like uh, I do want to explore some compute shaders there, to be honest, uh, as an alternative to compare against as well. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I guess, you know, maybe feel free to use this um, challenge as kind of like an inspiration to get you kind of exploring some things with some compute shaders. Um, again, I think the kind of theme of this jam in my mind is to kind of have something with dots and ECS at the core. Um, but I mean, there's of course nothing stopping you from, you know, using some compute shaders things on your own. I mean, and, and people can still use compute shaders to display it or like, uh, if they wanted to do some intermediate processing that isn't related to the Sean Connery's algorithm itself, uh, or, or, or like just to do a comparison, like they can have a, Oh, uh, if I enable this enum here, it will be in ECS mode, and then you can see the performance of the ECS mode, and then you can go into compute shade mode, and then it's the performance of the compute shaded version, which would also yeah. be kind of interesting. It would be interesting to see the performance difference between the two, especially because Sean Connery's game, uh, not Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, you kept saying Sean Connery. <laughs> and the, the funny John, thing is, I'm John Conway. John same Conway. Person, same person. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> James Bond. Yeah. No, but um, obviously, um, the, 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 his version does work well with compute shaders. So the, it's more interesting to know how does ECS uh, work in t tandem with a compute shaded version. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That, that is another thing that I wanted to bring up is, um, you know, with ECS, you can definitely separate the data side from the rendering side. So I think that kind of leads to some other interesting ways that you could take this. I know, um, you know, as, as you start getting into some like the really crazy things with Conway's Game of Life, um, where there's like things that are, um, you know, simulating over like thousands and thousands and thousands of generations, um, you know, you can, you might need to kind of separate the, um, you know, data update rate from the rendering update rate, because the data update rate, you know, that might need to update a lot faster. Um, whereas the rendering update, if you're updating that on a slower tick, you know, maybe you can get kind of better performance that way. So that's, you know, kind of another, another interesting way that you could take that. Um, by the way, um, feel free to go to the Turbo Makes Games Discord. Uh, you can get to there at tmg.dev slash discord. And then on there, we have a Game Jams channel. Um, so that would probably be the best place to go ahead and, and share things related to this here. Um, it's just under the kind of game development category, there's a, a Game Jams channel on there. So good call on that one there. Um, but yeah, so that is the Dots Community Challenge. Again, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you all come up with and uh, very excited to be participating in this and myself because um, it's been a little while since I've done a Conway's Game of Life and I've definitely learned a whole lot more about Dots and ECS over the past couple of years. Um, plus, so many things have changed in the API. So I'm very excited to get back to this project and uh, see how it compares kind of against my initial version from a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely also going to be curious uh, where people go with this. Like, will people be doing a bunch of structural changes and like, oh, every individual one is like going to spawn in and out? Or is it going to be a bunch of enableable components in a native array with a grid? Sort of like... There are so many ways to implement this still, even in the current version of ECS. So yeah, exactly. I'm very excited like... to see how people will end up doing it. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like I have so many ideas for it, and of course, like I have you know so many limited things that I can do. So it's like you know why not let's open this up to the community a little bit and see what everyone kind of collectively comes up with, and uh, we see all the cool and interesting ideas. 
Um, and then again, on the episode of the Hot Path show after the GDC one, so it's going to be the March 29th episode, we're going to be revisiting this challenge. And then that episode is going to be dedicated to um, you know, going through the submissions and finding some of the interesting things that you all created um, and just kind of, you know, talking about some of our own implementations. Because again, I plan on doing it. I think uh, Tobias is as well. And Danny, of course, you're welcome to. I know you're a very busy person, but... <laughs> I hope I have time. I really do want to do it. It's been a while since I've done that algorithm, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the cool thing is like with Conway's Game of Life, it is a pretty simple uh, to get the rules just implemented I think a lot more of the interesting things come into, um, you know, how do you kind of set it up optimally for performance? But, you know, as far as like the, you know, actual rules of the simulation, it's pretty straightforward and easy. 